I wanted to take this opportunity to go over option B of your final capstone project. Option B consists of two parts. One part is your module that you're constructing and the other part is a reflective piece. This is an opportunity for you to demonstrate the mastery of what the concepts that you've learned throughout this program of study. You're going to design an engaging technology assisted instruction format. So let's go along, scroll down. Part one of option B is developing an online interactive learning module. The module that you're going to create should be appropriate for your occupation and appropriate for the learners in your situation. The module is going to support the standards that are appropriate for a classroom educator or appropriate standards, competencies, or objectives for the organizational environment or training environment that you're involved in. The online and interactive module can address any grade, any subject, topic, task appropriate to your present or future training instructional responsibilities. The online format, you're going to choose this format that supports your situation and the learners involved in that situation. Um, it's going to serve as a hub for the instruction training designed. When you're designing your, your, your um, interactive teaching module, I want you to design or think about designing for the future and not just for the present as far as technology resources that are available for you or to you. Presently, if you don't have access to iPads and applications that you can use in that format, that doesn't mean that a windfall may occur and you'll have it in the near future. So still implement the options of using resources and apps that you think would really enhance your instructional design. The interactive learning module that you're going to design can be designed as an entirely online experience or as a blended learning implementation. It's going to guide the learner through the instructional process. It's not just a site that you're developing with links to websites. The module must include all material, materials and learning activities necessary to master those module objectives. So this means any written materials, online materials, activities you're going to have them do, use of applications that you find, mobile devices, appropriate assessments, any documentation, and any support materials. The online student experience must be a significant part of your interactive learning module. You must have a section for the instructor, the leader, or the trainer. In this section, you're going to store all the documentation and other instructor, leader, trainer materials that is distinct from the instructional portion of your learning environment. If you're using a blended learning impl implementation, you should include a description of activities that would be taking place within the classroom and how they link to the online portion of your interactive module. So create a description of it, or maybe a timeline of daily learning activities. There are certain requirements that this interactive activity uh, module must have. One, identification and focus. It must have the required length. It must have the required environment and activities. So we're talking about an interactive environment. We're talking about student-centered activities. 
and significant technology integration that provides the opportunity to engage students using the selected technology tools. So this module that you're creating must include a variety of appropriate instructional strategies and components that effectively enhance student learning. As a student interacts with the technology tools, the instructional focus must be student-centered, not teacher-centered. You must also include the self-created multimedia instructional video, your self-created multimedia instructional ebook, a self-created audio, use it for some sense in, in your module, or a self-created podcast in which your users subscribe to. Use of self-created or edited still images in a learning format and use of collaboration tools. And your interactive modules should include all necessary instructional materials and activities. If you're using a blended learning implementation, you must include or describe other materials and activities that will be utilized within the classroom setting or learning setting and indicate where they will be utilized in relation to the online activities. Scope. The instructional module may be built around a single theme or multiple connected units that demonstrate an appropriate sequence of instruction or training. And they must clearly support your stated objectives or standards. I think the next, next paragraph is very important. It says that when designing learning strategies with technology, design the learning environment in your module to include tools and resources that are the most effective for student engagement. Okay, these will probably include some tools that you may not have access to in your present environment. For example, you may work in an environment that blocks YouTube or blocks blogging, yet you really feel like that this experience would enhance your module, still include that idea in your module. Future situations can't be predicted as far as resources are concerned. And keep in mind that as new innovations emerge, the tools in your module may change. Think beyond your current situation and be sure to select at least some tools and strategies that you would love to use even though they may not currently be available in your learning environment. Be practical, but dream. Now, part two is very important. It's your project description and reflection. You scroll down, you're going to include the following items. Ideally, these items will be located in the online format on the teacher, leader, page, or section in your module. And you can address these, these items either in a paper or just on, in your module, in a video, or any appropriate format that allows you to meet the criteria of the section and to be evaluated by your instructor. So you're going to share your essential questions, unit questions, content questions, and you're not only going to state your essential questions, but you're going to defend how they meet the criteria of an essential question. And you're going to defend how that question or those questions are effective for engaging student interest in an inquiry in your learning module. You're going to defend how your learning activities and strategies and tools and assessments support your measurable objectives. Notice the emphasis on measurable. Three, you're going to explain how your instructional project planning has evolved. You're going to explain a clear dis description of your instructional design model and how you use that to implement and design your interactive learning module. 
defend, explain how it's the best fit for your learning topic. Four, you're going to reflect on student engagement throughout the learning interactive learning module. Share how initial student engagement will be increased at the beginning of the module and how it will be embraced throughout the module and how it will be maintained with the summative assessment. Student focus. Defend how you utilized the, the following bulleted list, student-centered learning through personalization, provision for advance, advancement based on mastery of knowledge and skills, provision for the flexibility, flexibility, the flexibility to learn anytime and anywhere, opportunities for students to make choices about their own learning. Six, you're going to explain and reflect on assessment strategies. Seven, how you met the needs of different learners, how you differentiated your, your instruction. Eight, technology integration provides specific examples of how technology will be integrated into your module. So you're going to do a lot of explaining to support how the tools that you selected are the best choice to enhance student learning. You're going to explain your technology resources and other materials that are needed in your unit, how they support it. Ten, justify how your module meets the necessary length requirement of your type of instructional or training setting by providing a summary of the individual activities and assessments along with estimated time requirements. And finally, 11, reflect on your entire planning, developing process and experience. And this is where, is, this is a reflective point of this about what changes that you would um, suggest if any in the process and positive implement improvements to your module. So anyway, this is option B, two parts. It gives you a chance to not only develop, but then to explain and reflect very thoroughly. Have fun developing.